Hey, Shibi Doodlers, how are you doing? Well, today I'm going to show you how to draw an ancient gnarled kind of olive tree, and it's done in uh, colour pencil and watercolour. But let's not talk about it. Let's do it. This video was suggested by Matt Marshall, who, when I'd been showing how to do illustrations from my Pandora book, spotted this olive tree, which actually kind of works its way through the book um, as, as a kind of a, a continuing motif, uh, right until the very last page. So how do we go about drawing it? So this is my Pandora book and these lilies in the background and these swallows were taken from that room in Akrotiri. And, uh, and I wanted something else. Um, I needed a tree, something to take you from this inside world to the outside world. And I kind of felt an olive tree really kind of states what it's all about. I can't remember where I got this olive tree from. I think I must have looked at lots of them on uh, Google Images and kind of put together this tree. So I have my piece of paper, which is um, a very flat kind of watercolour paper. And maybe I'll zoom in a bit. I've taped it on down at the edges so that it doesn't stretch. If you want to know more about that, uh, click up here about stretching paper. Well, if I was actually doing this for an illustration, then I would have drawn a rough first and I would actually trace this through from the rough. So because <laughs> I, I want to be sure I'm not going to make mistakes. So I'll make all the mistakes in the rough drawing. Um, but anyway, let's see how we go with this. Now I'm going over like that and we want to get a, a twist in the branch like that. So it's going to be sort of going oh, kind of like that. I'm kind of varying the pressure of the pencil. Um, and it's not a pencil, it's a Prismacolor, so it's actually a crayon. It's a, what I call a crayon. What everyone else calls a coloured pencil. Um, when I was a kid, they were known as crayons. But uh, we don't call them crayons anymore, we call them coloured pencils. So crayons are the big fat chunky things, aren't they? So um, this is where we're going. And then, so you want to sort of come around here. And again, we want to twist in the in the branch here. So I'm going to go back to the uh, the trunk part now. And so these are the roots. And I'm doing a very kind of feathery kind of um, line. And so it's a slightly sort of nervous jerky kind of line, I suppose, that I'm, I'm doing. And sometimes I press harder and sometimes I press lighter. And these are then the roots and they're going to have a root going off in that way but we want another root that's going to be coming up so you're going to get this really old gnarled <laughs> twisted kind of look and that's going to kind of come up all the way up to there i think so this will then come around there and and then we're going to have another branch heading off in this direction and so the branch has to sort of come off from somewhere. That's where that's coming. <laughs> and and then I just kind of put these kind of hints of little twigs going off there. So where this has come from here, then what we want is to have a line going up there and then just sort of coming in here. So you've got this slight twist in the branch and we've got another twist coming up here. It's just kind of these these fantastic gnarly kind of shapes that you want to get into uh, um, those Japanese things. Uh, drawing and talking at the same time is never good. Trying to remember that. Uh, uh, you, no, not Ikibana. <laughs> I'm going to have to stop for a second. Bonsai, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> it's uh, You use different parts of your brain when you're drawing and, you know, so language is <laughs> quite difficult while you're, while you're talking. So these little curves underneath sort of give this twist in the whole thing. And so I'm going to bring that off there. And again, I think like that. And that will sort of disappear off. And I'm just going to put these other bits just sort of sneakily heading off into the undergrowth so that we've got lots of kind of leaves that we're going to put in there afterwards. Um, how are we doing? I think we're going to need another kind of branch, maybe a 
just coming out from underneath that you're not kind of really seeing and uh, we're going to need something that's coming up there and sort of coming over and filling up that space and we'll just kind of fill into that space too and then maybe we can do something like that now what else do we need we need some holes in here don't we so I'm going to put a, a kind of a hole in there and maybe a bit of bit of shading and we're going to need a kind of a hole in there as well I think so I'm going to make that quite dark and then we've got these gnarly bits will be coming sort of around here like that and probably in around like that and maybe <laughs> just I, I'm inclined to say I'm making it up as I go along but of course I, oh, I'm not because wait a minute we want to have something else happening here I think don't we that's going there so I think we could bring that up in a kind of a, a, a crack along there maybe something quite dark in there and maybe in there too so I'm just putting in a little bit of sort of shading in there and I think we're going to want some mm, this is it's kind of adding adding a bit of texture in I suppose is what I'm kind of doing and we probably want a few sort of stones and pebbles on the ground maybe a few little hints of grass or something like that um, and I'm going to maybe put some kind of textury things in like that just to <laughs> give it a bit more um, I think we can do that there as well and in under there and that just gives it a bit more sort of life I suppose and oh, age and grandeur <laughs> and that will sort of need a bit up there and now I think it's time to start painting I got my old and trusty paint box and I'm just cleaning up the mixing palette and um, I think that's a bit too dark so I'm going to thin that down with a, a whoosh of water and I'm just going to go over the whole thing in this colour and I'm using a fairly big brush the, the bigger the brush the faster you're going to cover the paper uh, but then it's obviously it's not quite sort of getting into the details so I'll use a slightly thinner brush for those kind of things get a bit more detail in there for the finer bits and then I'm going to want something a bit sandy kind of coloured for the base. So I'm getting a bit of ochre and a bit of Naples yellow and sort of sticking them together. And, and I'm just going to do the base, the, the ground rather. And a nice big brush so I can just wash it all in quickly. Like that. And then I'm going to mix a bit of neutral tint and purple. I'm just going to add a little bit of, which is kind of the same colour as I just mixed with the others. <laughs> and I'm going to just bring that in as a bit of kind of shade under the tree. And I think to that original mix that I made, I'm going to add a little bit of neutral tint because that's what I use for shade. And I'm just going to kind of let that sort of float and flood into kind of the shadow areas the kind of under branches and things just to give it that little bit of kind of modeling a bit of sort of shade around one side and then I think we need a bit more I think you can probably add a few more little branches in here like that and it's just sort of very flicky Kind of paint brushes. This is a number four Rosemary and Co. Designer Series three four four because I know people like to know that kind of thing. If you want to know about Rosemary brushes, click up here. I'm not affiliated or anything. They're just really nice brushes. And now I haven't got all day, so I'm going to get my hair dryer and I'm going to dry this quickly. 
So now that that's dry, um, I'm going to start putting in some kind of shade in around these, particularly around these kind of holes and cracks and crevices. That's going to be wanting to be in kind of coming around down there as well, I think, like that. Um, and that will also want to kind of make this shadow a bit more obvious like that. And then it's there's going to be lots of kind of leaves, a light spreading through the leaves so we can kind of bring this into kind of dottiness. Now I'm taking my mother to the the doctor's quite soon for a doctor's appointment so that's kind of in the back of my mind thinking oh I need to get on with this and, <laughs> so, and I'm also thinking I've got to uh, got to get this finished to be able to post it up on YouTube and so there's a slight kind of pressure on me to, to get this done and, and I think I need to kind of soften soften these bits out there somehow it's just too they're too like much like dark holes just on one side of the tree so i need to kind of add a bit more into the rest of the tree that wants to be quite dark in there and you're really kind of thinking about you know where the light i'm thinking the light is sort of coming from this direction and so i'm needing to put um, the shadow underneath the branches there but of course you've got ambient light as well so you don't want it just right up to the edge it's kind of quite <laughs> tricky and I'm making it up as well <laughs> um, making it up from reference so I used a lot of reference and I think there's a difference between uh, reference and and just straight copying straight kind of tracing uh, you know, re reference you're kind of looking and seeing and understanding and I think if you just trace I don't think you quite get that understanding if you just do a straight copy you're probably really understanding things like that, light and tone and shape or things like that but I don't think you're actually really understanding the actual thing that you're drawing Whereas if you kind of do lots of sketches from all around and you kind of get the feel for whatever it is you're drawing and then you draw your own version of it out of your head from everything that you've learned. I think that kind of, hmm, I don't know. Quite often the one that you copy is going to look so amazing because you're actually <laughs> relying on probably a really good photographer and that you're relying on their eye and their artistry to make your picture look really good <laughs> so uh, but you, you know you're never going to be kind of original I suppose is the word you know you've got to you've got to break away you've got to break away and do your own thing at some point it's, it's like trainer wheels and um, I think that is probably well I think maybe a little bit more darkness in the in the holes um, yeah, yeah, and certainly in there, I think that needs more. Yeah, so a lot of this is sort of painting wet on wet to get these kind of flooding, flowing movements. And I think we can bring some in there as well. I think we need, that would be quite dark. And I suppose it, it, you know, it's, it's adding your imagination and your experience of life and you know, what you've seen in reality and <laughs> and what you've learned from your researches and from the copies that you have done that you are now putting all together. I'm going to um, get a bit of ochre and a bit of green. What green is that? Hooker's green? Something like that. Just to get um, to get that kind of pale green. And these uh, these brushes, this is a spotting brush. This is a Rosemary Series 307. And these are a real revelation to me uh, when I discovered them. And it's a spotting brush. And so um, you can <laughs> spot with it and kind of create little leaves as you're uh, painting. And so this is, this is very much kind of 
painting. This is very different to my normal style. My normal style is quite kind of, um, I don't know, <laughs> not quite sure how to explain it really, but um, I think, you know, normally I'm sort of filling in areas or rather and uh, more colouring in kind of style, I suppose. Uh, uh, probably a very advanced technical kind of colouring in. But uh, uh, I th uh, when I do this, I think, oh, this is different. This is like painting. Um, and so what is the difference? I don't know. Um, well, I'm, I'm sort of putting colour down into a free area here. Um, a, a free, unpredefined un area. So I think if I'm doing pen and ink, then I'm kind of putting in a... Um, I'm sort of, you know, drawing in in ink and kind of saying this. These are the areas that I want to kind of fill in, and so I'm not doing anything like that here. It's very, very different. <laughs> so, uh, so I think that's a kind of a base. So now I've let that kind of layer dry. A lot of watercolor is about working wet on wet, but then letting things dry. So then you can come and paint over the top and kind of redefine what you're doing. And I. I think these dark areas definitely need to be darkened up a bit. Um, and I want to kind of bring that down. So I'm adding a bit of clean water. So I put the paint in there like that. And similarly there, I'm going to put that in there. But now I'm cleaning my brush and I'm going to allow the clean water to kind of drag it down as it were. <laughs> so there and, and I'm just going to let that kind of disappear there um, watercolor is so much about layers and levels and and adding and I've said it so many times you know it's uh, Christmas time now it's time people is sort of buy those big boxes of sweet, sweet <laughs> candies, we call them sweets, um, which are kind of wrapped in, well, they don't seem to do that anymore. It's all done in those silver foil now, but in the old days, they were wrapped in colored cellophane and you could sort of hold it up to the light and look at the world in orange or blue or whatever and in a colored filter. And so each the layer of each layer of colour that you're putting down into a watercolour is basically a, a, a filter and the light is coming through from the paper. And and, and I think if you're doing watercolour, you have to kind of get through that mental um, sort of barrier of that's, you know, that's how it works and that's how you have to think in terms of, you know, putting transparencies over a light source. And now I'm going to go back to my... Sp I'm just adding a little bit of blue to the previous colour just to kind of make it a bit darker. And this is slightly different. And then I'm just going to kind of spot all over it again, really. And I just have to do an awful lot of this. And why did I choose to do this? Well, I don't know. You know, it's there's so many decisions you make when you're designing a book and illustrating a book. And... You know, Pandora is a very ancient story set in, well, as far as we know, originally set in ancient Greece. It probably goes back even further, Babylonians or something like that. And uh, so I wanted it set in ancient Greece, but I didn't want it to feel old somehow. I didn't want it to feel like, you know, this is a history lesson or anything. And um, so uh, I just wanted some very simple kind of symbols. Um, and not, you know, nothing, you know, I wanted it all to be about the character, but I wanted to have this kind of slightly, slightly beautiful kind of background. And I was kind of looking around and, and I'm a great fan of ancient Greek art, Minoan art particularly. And, and I was looking around and I came across images of that room in Akrotiri and I thought, oh yes, that's fantastic. And, and the swallows and things and... Um, I'm going to get more of a purple I'm going to mix into this now with a touch of um, neutral tint. And I'm just going to, oh, that's just too much, that's too wet. So, um, 
So it's just kind of adding different shades and tones and things to the leaves. I'm just being very patient <laughs> putting in a load of leaves. So, um, and, and so I was kind of thinking we, we had a, a very memorable holiday vacation in, in Greece and we went all around Mycenae area, which is, um, well, kind of around Mycenae really. And, um, and we went to uh, Epidopolis, I want to go there. Anyway, we went to various places. Um, uh, uh, and I'm going through all these um, endless olive groves, uh, which I think there would have been, maybe not quite so industrial in those days, but there would have been lots of olive trees around. And, you know, the olive is sort of very important to the economy and the life of the Mediterranean. And um, so I kind of thought that would work really well. And and as I started in, sort of in, introducing it as a, a theme, it kind of took on sort of various different, <laughs> different significances. And, and then, you know, yeah, this is the right thing to have. Um, I need a bit more bit more green again I think and um, yeah and so and then especially once I've sort of finally decided that my the things that get released from Pandora's box <laughs> click here and I'll read you the story if you want to know all about it uh, the, I, I decided the things that were released were going to be birds and so uh, it, it just sort of all worked and you know and you can get a final scene with the bird uh, the dove of peace and hope sitting in the tree and it all just came together really so uh and now i'm just gonna dab a bit more just kind of i'm just kind of filling in tonal areas now i suppose oh it's a bit too dark i think i need to and i think maybe i wouldn't do this in the book this, this bit that i'm doing now i think i'm probably doing this for the camera thinking how's it gonna look because I'm kind of looking in the camera and seeing how does that look and it might look completely different on screen but oh, I've only got four minutes <laughs> and I feel this is kind of about right I'm just gonna try it I think if, you, if I was being absolutely accurate I should sort of do olive leaves sort of something like that and so this is very much a kind of a, an impressionistic kind of thing. I need some kind of darker blobs in here. I mean, an olive tree has a very, the, the leaf structure is very particular. And and when you look at kind of the uh, other Minoan walls and things like that, then you go, oh yeah, that's really interesting. But that's a sort of, they become more of a two dimensional, um, kind of decorative kind of thing whereas this is more more of a painting really there you are i'm going to call that finished how to draw and paint an ancient olive tree as you might have found in pandora's time well i hope you enjoyed that and if you did click that subscribe button on the bottom right hand there and ring the bell when it when the subscribe thing comes up and then you'll be notified of all new videos as i put them up in the meantime keep drawing 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 painting 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 and practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.